Today we're going to be looking at something that's very simple but very useful that we can use a magnet for. And in our last lesson we talked about the ferromagnetic properties of some materials, that is that ability to be attracted to a magnet. We said that ferromagnetic materials, the most common ones include iron, nickel, and cobalt. And we're going to look at one of those today and how it can interact with a magnet. So I have two different chemicals here, two different substances. The first is just iron. It's called iron filings. It's just these tiny pieces of iron, um, just almost the size of really, really fine sand. And then the second material I have here is called sulfur, and it's just a yellow, powdery, chalky type chemical. And one of these is ferromagnetic material, but the other is not. So hopefully from our previous lessons you know that the ferromagnetic material is the iron, but in order to test that we can use our little bar magnet here, and if I put this near the sulfur, you can see that the sulfur is not attracted to the magnet. But as soon as I put the magnet near the iron, the magnet attracts the iron and it does, as we say, stick to the magnet. So you can see that we're able to use the magnet to pick up the iron filings because of that ferromagnetic property of the iron. Now the interesting thing that we can use our magnet to do though is to separate a ferromagnetic substance from a non-ferromagnetic substance, just like the example here of the iron filings and the sulfur. So what I've done now, I've actually mixed these two chemicals together, and now instead of just having iron or just having sulfur, I have a petri dish with both of those mixed in together. Obviously, these particles are so small, if we wanted to go through and just individually try to pick out grains of sulfur, pick out grains of iron, it would be impossible. But fortunately, because of the ferromagnetic properties of iron, there's an easier way to do this. So in order to separate these two chemicals, all I need is a magnet. And you can see as soon as I place the magnet near this mixture, the iron immediately starts coming out of it. So we're actually able to use a magnet to separate a ferromagnetic material from a non-ferromagnetic material. We're able to separate the iron from the sulfur. So that's a pretty neat demonstration there, just being able to pick that out. And certainly, if we wanted to get all of the iron out, we could kind of continue to pass the magnet over it, sift it around a little bit, pass it over again. And with a little bit of work, we could get all of the iron back out of our sulfur. So that's just a pretty neat demonstration of what we can do with magnets and ferromagnetic materials, able to separate a ferromagnetic material from a non-ferromagnetic material.